think it's a bit early to consider grilling up an ear of corn, but here in Florida, there's never a time of the year that corn isn't on the minds of UF scientists. And in this week's What's Growing On, TV20 Scott Gagliardi shows us how advances in research at UF are keeping our state in the top spot when it comes to sweet corn production. What's Growing On, sponsored by Alachua County Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. You don't necessarily think of corn in the heart of winter, but at the University of Florida, innovating the modern day corn we see today is a year round operation. The United States Corn Belt is found in Illinois and Iowa and outstrips Florida in acreage and production, but not quality and everyday use. The Midwest specializes in field corn. There are several varieties and are harvested after they're dry and never sold to be eaten fresh. Instead, field corn becomes corn meal, corn starch, grits, and any other corn based products. On the contrary, sweet corn, which is found here in Florida, and it's what we see at the local supermarket, becomes grilled corn, buttered corn on the cob, canned corn, or any preparation that involves corn as a vegetable rather than a grain. It is sweeter and less starchy than field corn and probably what you think of when you think of corn. And if the differences between corn weren't already interesting enough, super sweet corns have started to appear over the last several years. These hybrid strains are currently driving a revolution in the cornfield, specifically here in Florida. But where they originated is the most fascinating and is exactly where UF scientists come in. It was unrecognizable and so up until just a relatively few years ago, there was a lot of argument around about who was actually the ancient ancestor. Yeah. And so the prehistoric corn is just so different. Many, many steps took place before we got to where we are now. They were very small, roughly two inches long, and had an almost acorn-like shell, which made the kernels hard to reach. But what we have today is a clean, large husk cob with a protective silk and nearly 1,000 kernels per ear. This compared to the only eight found on ancient corn. Along the growth process, however, there were pieces of ancient corn that were kept the same because they were an essential building block to what we have today. It looks now like the full variety of different colors was present from the very start because we still have the, the Indian corn, we still have, I mean, all manner of different colors. You get purple corn chips, you know those came from purple corn, right? <laughs> But there are a few pieces of the evolution process that I am sure you would rather do without. But that little thing that gets caught in your teeth when you're eating a sweet corn, that's a piece of the ancient acorn-like shell that used to be around every kernel. And the evolution process doesn't stop here. Knowing exactly where ancient corn came from will determine how far we can go with it. Ancient corn become the modern kernel and then we can know which gene involved in this process and then we can uh, select them and uh, improve them. It started before the pyramids were built. You know, it's just, it's really an incredible thing to think about how much work and time went into this. To take a closer look at ancient corn and even see how one day it can possibly make its way all the way to Mars, visit our website. That's WCJB.com. Reporting in Gainesville, Scott Gagliardi, TV 20 News.